Last August, when I visited the site where HS2 crosses East-West Rail, it was possible to see part of the bridge structure that will eventually take EWR tracks over HS2. However, a few months after my visit in December 2022, the actual bridge deck was moved into place, which was a key milestone for the project. The bridge deck, which the HS2 website states weighs the same as 25 double-decker buses, which I estimate to be around 300 tonnes, was moved into place using a crawler crane with a 600 tonne lift capacity. The 35 metre long deck is made out of weathering steel, which seems to be a popular building material due to its long life and minimal maintenance requirements. The rusty colour of the bridge will dull eventually, transforming from the current orange colour to a darker brown over the next 5-7 to seven years. As well as moving the bridge deck into place, construction teams have also started to build up the ground as EWR approaches the structure, and it is possible to see what looks like a completed track bed to the east. Before an embankment can be constructed to the west however, a new road bridge must first be completed, which will take EWR over the road rather than using the existing bridge which currently takes the railway alignment underneath the road. There is still some work left to do on the HS2 bridge structure, but once that work is complete the site will be handed to East West Rail teams, with the site expected to be handed over later this year. Once the bridge is complete, EWR teams can finish the embankments leading up to the bridge and lay rails for EWR over the top. The location of the EWR HS2 crossing is just to the north of the small village of Calvert in Buckinghamshire and sits just to the east of the Calvert Jubilee Nature Reserve. At this point, both HS2 and East West Rail will be making use of existing railway alignments with EWR using the old Varsity Line and HS2 using a section of the Great Central Railway. In fact, HS2 follows almost exactly the alignment of the Great Central Railway from Quentin Road Junction to the EWR crossing. North of the bridge crossing, the GCR begins to curve sharply and as such HS2, which requires a larger curve radius, begins to deviate from the original alignment. As well as the EWR HS2 crossing, there will also be a new infrastructure maintenance depot constructed just to the northeast of the bridge that will be connected to both HS2 and East West Rail. This will allow infrastructure maintenance trains to travel from other parts of the existing network to the IMD. I believe this will be the first location at which HS2 will be connected to the existing network, with the other planned much further north to the West Coast Mainline at Hansacre, located to the southeast of Rugeley. The link at Calvert will however only be used for infrastructure trains and will not provide a link for passenger trains. Once operational, the IMD will be used to plan and manage HS2 infrastructure maintenance activities and will also be used to store plant equipment and track maintenance vehicles, as well as being a centre for training maintenance staff. Work on the depot itself is due to commence in 2025 and be completed by 2028, in time for trial operations on HS2 between Old Oak Common and Birmingham Curzon Street to commence in 2029. Currently there isn't a great deal to see in terms of construction work and it looks as if site clearance and preparatory work is still ongoing. But a little further east at Queen Catherine Road it is possible to see already completed sections of rail that will connect EWR to the IMD with rails and switches already in place. This part of the East West Rail route has certainly progressed a lot since my last visit and it's great to see rails finally being installed for EWR. In fact some sections of the East West Rail route look for all intents and purposes like completed sections of railway, however there is still plenty of work left to do. Today's video was just a short update about the bridge crossing and I plan to release a more in-depth look at East West Rail shortly in which I'll try to explain what the recent funding announcement means for the re-establishment of a rail link between Oxford and Cambridge and we'll take a look at some more of the work that has taken place so far.